everybody. My name is Miss Rocky. I am an ele elementary art school teacher and I've been teaching for the last uh, five and a half, six years at a local school. But because of COVID, uh, we had to shut down and I was asked to do some art videos for the classroom for the teachers to use online through their Zoom class or now that we're sl slowly starting to get back into class, um, they are using them in their classrooms as well. So uh, they've asked me, my teachers have asked me to do a fun watercolor project for Mother's Day. So what better to do for Mother's Day than some beautiful tulips? I love tulips, it reminds me of spring, of new beginnings, of um, just wildflowers and fields and uh, grass and bugs and I just love tulips. Um, the one fun thing about tulips is it's quite an easy flower to draw. So that's why I chose tulips. And so we're going to go ahead and um, kind of go through what you need for this lesson. Um, that way you have all your supplies. At any time at all, you can push stop or pause and gather what you need. And then you can start me back up. And I want to remind you that as we're drawing and as we're painting, if I'm going too fast or if you need a little extra time, um, in one of the steps, just push pause. And then you can start me back up when you feel like you're ready to go on to the next step. That's what's so wonderful about these video art lessons is that you can take your time, there's no rush, and you can even rewind and play me over. And um, you're probably gonna get sick of me after a while listening to my voice. And I'm gonna remind you a couple of times during the lesson, this is a good time to stop and you know, get caught up if you're behind or take your time or, you know, and I might even pause and stop and, and start back up again. So with that said, I'm going to tell you what you need. And if you don't have some of these things, I'm going to show you, you know, what you could use instead. So what you're going to need, of course, is just some sketch paper. So I'm going to be using a large, uh, a larger piece of uh, watercolor. This is an 11 by 15. Okay, that's the size of these ones back here. You can do an 8 by 10, 8 by 11 and a half, whatever size you have, just use that. That's fine. I'm doing big because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing and it's just easier on a bigger piece of paper. But this is what I'm using. So this is my watercolor paper and then I'm going to just use a, the same size sketch paper. So in my classes, this is called a sloppy copy. The reason why we call it sloppy copy is because when you're just learning how to draw something, you're not going to get it right the first time. Maybe you will. I don't know. Some of you are really good artists, but you might need to try it again and again. And so we call this sloppy copy because it's our sloppy version of what our original, our final uh, piece is going to look like. And this is where you can make all the mistakes you want. You can use your eraser if you want, but you really don't have to. This is just a sketch. Then what we do is we flip it over and we draw our actual piece on the, uh, on the other side or get another piece of paper, whatever makes you happy. But this is where we practice. And if you need a couple of sheets of this, don't feel bad. This is, you know, we're not all gonna get it right the first time. Uh, we're not all born artists. We all have it in us to learn, and we all have special talents, but maybe drawing isn't one of yours, and that's okay. So this is why it's called sloppy copy. There's no mistakes in art, okay? So just try it again. So this is my sloppy copy paper. You're going to need a bigger brush for putting water on your paper, and you're also going to need smaller brushes like these. And actually, let me reach back. I actually have a big old jug of brushes right here. So I might even do an even smaller one at some point. So I'm going to get different size brushes so that I have lots to choose from. You probably have something like this in your classroom if you're in school. Um, some teachers actually just went all over the floor. Some teachers have liquid um, uh, watercolor, which is really potent and really dark. The um, colors are really vibrant, and that's what I used on these. But if you have this, it'll work just as well. Um, you just need a little bit more water to, to work the, the color. All right, let's 
So, clean up that mess later. All right, so you need one of these, something like it. And then, um, let's see, oh, if you have, if your teacher has this, this is great to have. Um, some transfer paper. So this is like a carbon paper. And when we're done with our sloppy copy, we can use this to copy our image that we've already drawn onto our watercolor paper. So you would just place this on top of your watercolor paper and then your picture. And then you just trace over your already drawn picture and it will magically appear on your watercolor paper. If you don't have that, then we are going to just use our pencil and we're going to, so here's a drawing that one of my students did. And I'm just gonna put some of the lead, um, I'm gonna use the side of my pencil and I'm going to rub it onto the image. Notice how I did not do the whole page in my lead. I only did where my lines were. So I just covered it, the side of my pencil, and then you can actually put that down on your, oh, down on your watercolor paper and, um, and it should give you a faint line on your paper. Now, one thing I want to say about that is when you use transfer paper, it leaves a dark line when you, when you transfer the, uh, the image onto the paper. And this is a good example of that. So this is, my, this is my daughter's. So do you see, you can see the pencil line. And then if you actually just draw your image on your paper very lightly so as to not have a very dark line then you're going to have something like this see do you see the pencil line I don't see the pencil line and this this one I did and I did ever so carefully lightly sketchy I sketched my image onto my paper very lightly so that when I put the watercolor on I would not see the pencil line. So there's lots of ways to do this and there's no wrong way or right way. I'm just showing you the different, different ideas, okay? So um, today we're just gonna go ahead and do our sloppy copy and then we're going to um, draw it right onto our paper and we're gonna do it lightly um, because I'm sure a lot of you at home might not have all these supplies, okay? So I'm going to turn my camera down now, and we're going to start with our tulip images. Now notice how these two, they're going to fall. These two are done portrait, portrait style. So the paper is portrait, and this is turned landscape. So if you do a landscape, you're going to get a lot more flowers, right? If you do portrait, I want you to have at least three tulips. It's always good to have three or more, not just one or two. They're, they look kind of lonely if there's just one or two. So we want to have three or more. And I want you to have your tulips in varying sizes, like heights. So I'm going to show you, I actually bought some tulips, to show you what a tulip really looks like. Okay. So here we have a beautiful tulip. Like that. Okay. Notice how... Our tulip, this tulip is kind of halfway, it's not quite open, but it has quite a few petals, there's quite a few outside, there's three on the outside, and then they just kind of overlap each other at, all the way in. There's probably a good nine petals on my flower. I'm going to get this guy, this one's a little bit more open, okay? So notice how these petals are shaped. They have a little bit of a point to the top, and they're very round, they almost look like a spoon. Okay, so as you're drawing your petals, I want you to think about what a spoon looks like. Not a soup spoon, but a teaspoon, because they're kind of, it's kind of pointy at the top and it's fatter at the bottom, okay? And then notice, this one only has one leaf, but notice how it hugs the stem and it kind of goes straight up. It's not like way out here, stick, it's not. This is a great example of tool, I love this one, but these ones are kind of sticking straight out, and that's okay, it looks fine, but notice how, I'm gonna show you this one. This one has two at the bottom, and they kind of overlap each other, and they kind of flop down, which, you know, they can either be pointed up or flopping down, and then there's another one up, up the stem a little bit more, and it's going straight up. So I want your tulips to have at least two leaves, 
and they should not be small. They should be quite long and pointy, okay? Let's see if I can find another one that looks good. This is a bud. That one's beautiful. And look at how the leaves actually hold it, hold the bud. It still has had some room to grow up, but it hadn't done it yet before it was picked. And then here's a couple more. So same thing, look at how long those leaves are, long and pointy, and they are pointing up. Some are floppy, that is true, but most of all, most, most of them are, have leaves that are pointing up. And um, so there's one at the bottom here, and then there's like three little ones kind of up around the tulip. So think of that when you are drawing your leaves, okay? And I should um, point that out again a little bit later. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and start our sketch, all right? I just got water all over my paper. That's not that bad. All right, so I'm going to tilt my screen down like this. I'm going to be drawing, but then I will kind of turn it so that you can see it once I've, I've drawn. So I want to draw, I'm going to draw three to five. We'll see how we do. Uh, I'm going to start over here on my left side and kind of work my way across my page. I'm going to go ahead and do landscape. That way I can show you how to draw varying sizes, okay? So I'm gonna do landscape. I am going to start out by drawing my stem because I wanna know how tall my tulip is. I wanna make sure that this one I'm gonna make tall and I'm gonna kinda of make it a little curved like so. And now if you can't see quite yet, I'm gonna do kind of a thick stem, but not too thick. I'm hoping you guys can see that. I don't, know. I don't know. So there you go. There's my long, skinny stem. Okay, I don't want it too much fatter than that. And I'm not just drawing one line for a stem. I'm drawing two so that it's, it's two-dimensional. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and do my egg shape or my spoon-shaped um, petal, my first petal. I'm going to kind of make it sideways. There we go. Do you see that? So that's my first petal. I'm gonna make one of my, this tulip, because it's tall, I'm gonna make it bloomed out. It's gonna be bloomed. And then I might actually do one that's just a bud next. So my next petal is gonna actually overlap that. I'm gonna show you that. So see how my petal overlapped the other one? Now when I go to paint this, I'm, I'm pushing hard, but no, when you go to uh, put it on your watercolor paper, you definitely don't want to draw this hard. I'm doing it hard so that you can see in the camera. But if I, um, as I'm drawing, I'm going to erase one of those lines. And that way it looks like one is on top of the other. Okay? So there's my two um, petals. Now I'm going to draw, if you remember correctly, we had three that went around the flower. So I'm going to draw the back petal. I'm going to go ahead. Just draw it right here. Let's see if I can do it upside down. So there's my back petal. All right, it's behind the other two. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw two more, um, one in front of this and kind of one behind it so that it looks like they're, um, and I'm not going to make them super pointy because, let me erase. So look at that. I've got one behind and I've got one in front of that back one. I went ahead and just erased that line. So that would be my open tulip. All right. I could even add another little petal right in there. I'm going to do that. I'm going to add another one right here. So it looks like there's one in front, another one in front. See? Or maybe I'll do another one. Maybe I'll do another one right here. So see how you can just kind of change it as you go and just add. So there you go. I've got quite a few petals there. So that will be my open tulip. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw the leaves, all right? I'm going to go ahead and draw one more towards the bottom and then another one on the side. So let me do that. Now this is the point where if I'm going too fast, you might want to stop the video. And then you can always start me back up again, all right? Okay, I drew one leaf and I'm gonna erase my stem line so it looks like the leaf's in front of my stem. And then I'm gonna do another one that comes up behind it. 
and it's going to be as tall as my flower. There. Okay, so here we go. There's my leaves. So I did one in front, and I actually erased a little bit of my stem so it looks like this leaf is in front of my stem, and then I did one behind. And I just went ahead and went almost as tall as my flower. So there's one tulip. How about that? Now I think I'm going to add a few more. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the closed tulip. That's actually quite easier, much easier than this one. We'll do that and then I'm going to stop the video and add on all of my other tulips. So I'm going to go ahead and have it growing pretty much next to it and I'll have it be a lot shorter because it is a baby tulip that it's not quite bloomed yet. So I'm going to make it shorter. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same shapes, but maybe just a little smaller that I did with um, the open one. But I'm going to make them a little closer together. So notice how this guy right here, I did those same two petals, but these two are further open, further apart than these two. These two are kind of pointing up but they're right next to each other. And I erase that one line. So it looks like this petal is over that petal. Okay, so overlapping. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and add another petal behind and maybe one kind of in front. So there you go. See that? So that would be a more closed tulip. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add on my, um, my leaves and on this one, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do it more like this guy where the leaves are kind of coming up around it. That's what I'm gonna do. Maybe not as high, but yeah. I'm gonna have them kind of coming behind it. And then maybe one over here. Okay, and I think I'll have that one go in front. Okay, so look at that. So I have one leaf, I went ahead and drew it all the way up and then I decided to go behind the tulip. So it looks like that leaf is behind the tulip. And then this one, I'm gonna erase that one line with the stem so that way this leaf looks like it's in front. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase that line. Let's see, this one, okay. Okay, now look at that. So now that looks like that leaf is in front of the tulip, okay? So I'm going to push pause and I am going to draw at least three more, I think, because I have a long one, so I'm going to do five. You don't have to be that ambitious. Um, like I said, if you don't want to draw as many because you're new to this and you're kind of nervous and you're thinking, five, that's too many, then do it portrait. And then that way you could have, see I had four here, but you could have easily done three, right? And here, this girl did one, two, three. Well, she did five, but hers are a lot smaller, right? So it's really up to you how many you want, but it has to have at least three. And the reason why I say that, like I said before, is one and two look a little lonely. And it's not, it's, I think odd numbers are always better. So three and five are really good. That's a good number, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and stop, and I'll be right. finished my drawing. I'm going to show you guys what I came up with. Um, so I went ahead and drew one, two, three, four, five, and then I actually drew another one over here that went off the page. And notice how this le these leaves are going off the page. So I always like my drawings to go off the page. I'm going to show you um, right here. Notice how this tulip is kind of going off the page, and so is this one. This tulip is going off the page, and it just makes it look a little more natural and not so stiff and up and down. And it looks like you're kind of zooming in with a camera and taking a little snapshot of a little tulip field. And you're not just drawing three straight tulips. You're, you're drawing a field of tulips or you're zooming in on a field. This one, did the, the, she did the same thing. She had one go off the page. This one over here went off the page. And I believe she did this too. So I always teach when we're doing some kind of a landscape picture meaning a natural scene, um, to kind of zoom in on it and make it look like you're taking a picture with your camera, okay? So I have my now my drawing, which um, my, my light is blaring. Let me change my light here. Okay, 
so still kind of glaring. So there's my picture. I'm going to go ahead now and transfer it. I'm going to use my transfer paper, um, or like I said, you can rub your pencil on the back of your paper. Now, when you do that, don't get upset when it doesn't go on dark. It's really going to be a very light line, and that's what you want. You want a very, you just want to be able to see it so that you, it's kind of like you're creating your own um, coloring book page, okay? And you don't really want the finished product to see the lines of your coloring book. You want it to look like you just freehand painted it and that you're that good and you're just an amazing artist. So the, the less lines that you see, I think the better the picture will actually come out. So as you transfer your, um, if you have transfer paper, definitely use that. It makes it so much easier. Always make sure that the shiny side is down on the watercolor uh, paper. And then you put your page on top. And what I like to do is I use paper clips, and not paper clips, um, clothesline clips. And I clip my paper together. That way it doesn't move, because if it moves around, then your picture's gonna be all crazy. You don't want your paper to move. And you're gonna go ahead and you're going to just go over all your lines. Now, if there's a line on there, like maybe you overlapped and you forgot to erase, this is where you can fix that because you just don't transfer that line. You don't go over that line. Whatever line you don't like, you just don't go over the line with your pencil when you go to transfer it, okay? So I'm gonna kind of show you the magic of carbon paper. I'm gonna go ahead and um, just draw over one of my leaves and then I'm gonna show you how it magically appears onto my um, paper, okay? I'm gonna do this stem too. Oh shoot, I just transferred a line I didn't want. Let's see, I can show you what that's all about. There's no mistakes in art, seriously. You don't need to stress out, it's supposed to be fun, and you should be taking your time and not being in a rush. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. Look at that. Okay, so I only transferred a few lines. So I went over, I went over my leaf right here at the edge of my paper. I just traced those lines and look at that. It transferred it exactly onto my paper the way I wanted it to. So that was just the leaf and the stem. I haven't done the flower yet. But I'm gonna go ahead and do my whole picture just like that. And like I said, if you don't have the transfer paper, you could either redraw it on your, um, on your uh, watercolor paper if you feel like you got it down and you want to just redraw, redraw it. Because remember, this is your sloppy puppy. This is like the, the, the one that you make mistakes on. Um, this is not what you're going to paint on, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and transfer my whole thing, and then I'll be right back. I finished transferring my image onto my watercolor paper. So here we go. Look at that. Looks just like my other picture because it is my other picture. I just transferred it onto the paper. So I didn't have to redraw it. And that's the beauty of having the carbon copy paper, the transfer paper. It's wonderful stuff. So I use this all the time, even with my paintings on canvas. I draw out my idea, and then I transfer it onto my canvas using this. And that way I have it already on there, and I know exactly what I want to paint and where I want to paint. So this is one of my little tricks that I use with all my classes. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I have my cup of water. Okay, I have a jar of water. You can use a solo cup or a plastic cup or whatever, paper cup. Just get a, a nice big glass of water. And I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to push, put my camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I have my palette. I like this palette because it has a lot of bright colors. So I'm going to use this guy. Um, whatever you have is fine. Um, I'm going to use more of the darker colors. And what we're going to do is I'm going to do the same colors pretty much kind of like you know this one or this one I'm just gonna vary the colors you know lighter and lighter and darker so with this tool up here I used red orange and purple so I use three colors okay so I, I encourage you to use more than one color this um, girl Finley she used yellow to start and then she used I think a red 
and I think she added orange. But she filled in her flower with orange and yellow, and then she used a very small brush and did red and kind of went over her pencil lines to hide her pencil lines a little bit. But it gave it that really cool watercolor, you know, blurry look. I love it. It looks so pretty. It looks like stained glass. I love it. So there's so many different ways that you can do this. Um, you can choose whatever colors you want and you can paint your background or you don't have to paint your background. So this one's plain. This one's really fun purpley blue color and this is just sky blue. So you get to decide but you have to remember that whatever your background is it can't take away from your flowers. So we want to make sure that our background isn't too crazy and you only want to use one to two colors like she used two, she used blue and purple, which was fine. It, it, it turned out beautiful, but she, um, you know, if she would have used another color, it would have taken away from her beautiful tulips. So remember that, okay? And I always tell my class, no sunshines, no sunshines with smiley faces, no birds, no butterflies. We wanna just see tulips. The more stuff you have in your picture, the more it t your eye gets going everywhere and you, you can't focus on one thing. And so this is just a tulip uh, lesson and I really want to see how beautiful your tulips are. Um, I always say no sunshines with smiley faces because guess what? The sunshine makes me smile, but sunshines don't have a smiley face. That's not a real thing, right? It's nice to have a happy sunshine and I know I'm happy when the sun is out, but we don't want to have cartoony looking sunshines in our sky, okay? So I always make sure my kids know that that's a rule. That's just one of my rules. That's just how I roll. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I, these paints, you have to get your paper wet to use. So I'm going to wet down whatever flower I'm working on. I'm not going to do them all. I'm just going to wet down as I go. So I'm going to use this big fat brush. It's not that big, but I'm going to use this brush and I'm going to go ahead and wet down my first flower. And so I'm going to turn the camera down like so. I'm hoping, yeah, you can see. Okay. So I'm going to work on this guy right here. It's close to the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my flower wet. I'm just going to put water inside my flower on all my petals. Okay. Just get a little damp. And what this does is it helps the paint to move around. All right. It helps it to spread. Now we don't want to go outside our lines because then our paint will go outside our lines. So we're just getting our flower wet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this dark, well, I'm going to use this orange right here. So I'm going to get my, these are called little um, cakes, little paint cakes. I'm going to get this paint, paint cake really nice and wet. Rub some water on it. And I'm going to go ahead and add my orange paint to all of my petals. And then I'm going to change it up in a minute. So I'm going to do orange, orange, and I'm going to add maybe a little bit of bright yellow in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that. So there you have it. There's my orange. Okay. I'm going to take a smaller brush, more, more like this guy. I'm always switching my brushes, just so you know. And now I'm going to use um, maybe, let's see, I'm going to use this darker orange. It's kind of an orangey red. Now, I normally I would not say to put your paint palette on your paper like this because you don't want to get paint all over your, um, any, you don't want to drip paint. But I'm doing this just for this video because I want you to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of outline my orange a little bit. And I'm doing this all at the same time on this one petal because I want it to kind of bleed and blend while it's wet. I don't want to bounce around too much because then you're orange paint would dry it and it wouldn't um, blend well with any other color that you add to it. So I'm going to just add a little bit of red. I might even come back and add more red in a minute. Rinse my brush. Every time you change colors, you should rinse your brush. Now I think I'll use this yellow. I kind of got a little orange on that yellow. That's okay. I'm going to add a few little highlights to some of these petals, just a little, with my yellow. My yellow turned orange. Just a few little highlights. You know, a lot of times the tips of a tulip are where the color 
the darker color is, so you could always, always do that. You could go light to dark. So maybe I'll do my next two look like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. I can always come back and add more color later. But as this dries, it actually starts to kind of change a little bit. So I want to kind of see what it does as it dries. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do, I'm going to start with yellow this time. Okay, so I'm going to do this guy. I'm going to do the whole thing yellow. I should have some music, huh? That would be nice. I don't want too much distraction though. In my class, we have an Alexa and we always have some great um, kind of classical music playing or Jack Johnson or something kind of mellow and, you know, relaxing. Except my students like to yell at Alexa and tell her to play crazy stuff and then we have to turn it off. Okay, I'm just gonna do the tips this time and see what happens. I'm just gonna add a little orange to my tips. Haven't you ever seen those kind of tulips that are just orange on the tips? I know I have. Now, my, um, my transfer lines are super dark. I would normally not push very hard on my transfer paper because I really don't want to see my lines, like I've said. But I'm doing this for you guys because the camera doesn't see faint lines. <laughs> and I want you to be able to see my lines. But you're going to definitely see my lines in this painting, and that's okay. Okay, so there's that one. I'm going to leave it. I might do a little red in a minute, but I'm going to let that soak in a little bit first. So notice how I'm doing all of my um, tulips first, and then I'm going to switch to green, okay? I like to go from the top down. And the reason why I like to do that is because I don't want to put my hand, like if I did this leaf right here, and then I, was, I put my hand on it and started working on this tulip, oh my gosh, I'd have a mess. I'd smear my paint all over the place. So I like to work from the top down. You can always turn your paper into a different direction. Like, I'm going to turn mine because I don't want to put my hand in that tulip. So that way I can work on this tulip, okay? So I'm going to start with dark, and I am going to just do the tips and kind of outline it a little bit. And, oh, you know what? I forgot to get that one wet. Hello? I bet you somebody thought of that out there. So I like to get it a little bit wet. If you don't get it wet, that's okay. It's not going to ruin it. You can always go over it with a water. And it does make the color darker, for sure. But I love the colors to bleed. So I like to get my paper wet. Okay. So I am using a different orange this time. It's even a darker orange. I'm just going to stay in the same family, the same shade. And do complementary colors, which are colors that are in the same family. So the oranges, the reds, the yellows, they're all in the same happy family, right? Okay, I love that. That's super cool looking. Have you ever seen a white tulip with a fun edge? I've seen those too. There's so many different types of tulips. Okay, now I'm going to add yellow. So that was kind of a deeper orangey red, and then I'm going to add yellow towards the bottom. And I'm just barely using it. Now the smaller brushes are better for this because then you can really get in there and get where you, the color where you want it to be. If you had a big fat brush, oh my goodness, you'd be making a mess. So this is always best to use a smaller brush for the paint. Okay, okay I really like that. I think that's really pretty. Notice how all of them are a little different, but they're all in the same family. All right, this guy, because he's a bud, I'm going to make sure I do him pretty much a solid color. So I'm going to get, get him wet. Okay. And I'm going to do a deeper kind of reddish orange color. Use my brush. Now, there's a lot of water on that, so I might have to go over it a couple of times with um, color. So I think I put too much water. Yeah, so if you see that it's like pooling, the water's pooling, that means that you probably put too much water, which I did. So I'm going to leave that alone for a minute and let it soak in, and then I'll go back to it. Okay? Don't keep playing with it because it'll just make a big mess. Okay, so I'm going to keep my paper sideways. I like this because then I'm not putting my hand in it. So I have one, two, three, four. I have four somewhat done. I'm going to go ahead and work on this one. I think I'm going to do this one 
kind of similar to these right here. So I'm going to get my orange. I'm going to go ahead and outline. Oop, I forgot to get it back. Where the hell is my... I'm distracted because I'm filming myself. It's kind of weird. Have you guys ever tried filming yourself? You just... Ah! I want my picture in the background. No. Okay, it's just kind of weird to be standing. I'm sitting in my kitchen talking to myself. It's kind of weird. That's okay. I do talk to myself all the time in my car. It happens, but never on camera. All right, so I got my red, and I'm going to just mix in a little bit of a lighter orange on the bottom here. I'm just going to kind of tap it in because I have lots of water on that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and leave it, and I'm going to start my leaves, and I'm going to let, I'm being super careful, because as I move the paper, the water wants to jump around. Um, so I don't want it to spill over the line, so I've got to be super careful. Okay, so I'm going to let those sit, and I'm going to come back to those, and I'm going to outline some of the petals in the darker colors. Okay, I'm going to use, I'll show you. I'm going to use this skinny little brush right here to do some outlining with a darker color. and that's But that's after it dries a little bit. So now I'm going to go to my palette. And I think I'm going to use, so like I said, we like to use more than one color, right? Well, we, it's the same for the leaves. So I am going to start out, <coughs> excuse me, with a lighter color. And have you ever noticed, like I'm going to show you on this guy right here. So notice how the tips of the leaves are darker and it's lighter as it goes down to the stem. So I kind of want to give that effect. I'm going to make sure my stem is light and my leaves are darker, okay? All of these are like that. Look at, look at that. So we have lighter at the bottom and we have darker towards the tip. This one, even this little baby guy with only one leaf, look at how light that stem is and then how much darker the leaf is. So we want to vary those colors on our painting just as much. So now I'm not gonna use my big fat brush for the skinnier um, leaves. I'm gonna use a, a, a thinner brush to get it wet, okay? So here's one that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna start with my first one here, and I'm gonna go ahead and get that wet. It's actually missing part of the line right here, but I don't. I don't care. I know where that leaf is supposed to be. So I'm going to get that guy wet, and I'm going to do that one with a darker color. I'm going to get my stem wet. Now, as you're getting close to something that you've already painted, you do not want to touch that with a water brush because guess what happens? That orange is going to travel into my green. So I'm trying really hard to get my stem wet without touching that orange flower. Okay? We don't want to the orange to come down into the stem. I think I'm missing part of this leaf. I'm gonna draw it in right here. I'm gonna lightly draw it in. Somehow I forgot that line. So if you forget to transfer a line, not a big deal. Just draw it in with your pencil really lightly. No biggie. Okay, so I got that a little bit wet. I'm gonna take my smaller brush. This one I had orange on. It's always good to have a paper towel or something to wipe your brush on, too, which I forgot. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use this kind of medium green. And I'm going to put that on my stem. I'm going to do my stem in this. It's kind of like a celadon green. It's one of my favorite colors. It's my stem. I don't know if that comes down or not. There's my stem, and I might have to go back over that in a minute with more color. Okay, now my leaves, I'm going to do a darker green, so I'm going to choose this one right here. So your palettes should have at least two different shades, possibly three, four, or five of each um, of your colors. Yeah, maybe that, that color's not dark enough. I'm going to do something darker. You can always kind of change, like you can always go over a color with a different color if it's not working out, as long as it's in the same family. 
can try to see you. Man, that little cake patty thing is super dry. It's just taking a while to get the color to move. All right, there we go. Ooh, I like that. That's pretty. So pretty. And then I think that back leaf, I'm going to even do a completely different color. Just that way it, it shows. I'm going to make it even darker. Darker color. Yeah, it's not that much darker, but just got to pl play around with it, you know? And just be super careful. If your paper kind of dries up, it's okay. Get that color back on there. And if you need to add a little water to the paper, you can always, you know, dip your brush in the water and add water to the paper and, and spread that color around. So if your paper dries up, your color isn't going to spread and you'll know. And so you're going to have to just dip your brush in that water and add more water to your paper. Okay, so there you have it. Now look at how I don't want to tilt my, um, my paper when I'm um, painting. You never want to pick it up and say, look, because all of this water is going to run down. So you, you can't not touch your paper and pick it up until it's completely dry. But can you see how I have the different variations of green? And my stem, I think I'm going to actually add more to my stem now that it's dried up a little bit. So I want my stem to really stand out a little bit more. So you can always go back over a color with more color. Okay, there we go. I like that. I'm going to add a little to this side of the leaf too. I might even add a little yellow. I'm going to add some yellow to my leaf at the bottom. Just a little. And that gives the leaf the little variation to it. Ooh, I like that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and continue on. I'm going to tilt it up. I'm going to finish all my leaves, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to show you how I kind of go over all of my flowers one more time, okay? So I finished all of my flowers and all of my leaves, um, and... I added a little bit of yellow to my stems because it just wasn't bright enough or light enough, I guess you could say. So, I mean, this is where you just kind of experiment with your color. So I added this yellow right here when I was all done with my greens. I added it to the bottom of my leaves so that it looked more like, you know, this lighter kind of color. And then it went lighter to darker. And this was lighter right here, remember? So I made that a little bit lighter with by adding yellow to that lightest green that I had. I want to show you what happens when you when you blend when you I touched the the green with the red and then my red went into my green leaf. I'm not going to stress about it. Whatever. It's watercolor. It's it, it looks fun. I love it. You could always like let that dry, kind of wipe it off a little bit and then go over it with green. I mean, it's not the end of the world. You can always take a little napkin or a paper towel and kind of dab it and then repaint it. There's really no mistakes in art. You you can always kind of tweak it, fix it, blend it. Don't stress about it, okay? So this is my, no, I'm not quite done. I want to take my littlest brush, because that's just how I am. And I'm going to get it wet. And I'm going to take the darkest color that's in my, um, my tulip. Actually, I'm going to take the darkest red that I have on my palette. I'll do a little bit of a purpley, purpley pink red. And I'm just going to outline, again, there's no mistakes, there's no right or wrong answer. I'm going to outline, so this is kind of a fuchsia pink I'm using. I'm going to outline a little bit my, um, some of my petals, because I want to get rid of that pencil line. That's really my big thing. I hate pencil lines. But if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. This is your painting. Remember, you're the artist, and you get to decide what your finished product is going to look like. It's not my painting. I'm just giving you some pointers, right? So there's no wrong answer in art. I'm going to add a little water to this now because I want it to kind of bleed. I don't want it to look like a line. I don't want it to look like I outlined it. I want it to kind of look natural. So I'm going to add. So I kind of like that. I'm going to get rid of that line. So you can always add a little bit of water to your painting to help bleed the colors together. So I kind of like that better than what it was. This one I think I'm going to use more of a red. 
and I'm going to just kind of outline a little bit. Nothing crazy. I'm going to take some more of that paint right there and add it. So I'm using the paint that's already on the canvas or my paper, and I'm kind of dragging it around. So I don't want to put too much paint. I'm just trying to give a little highlights, a little variation to my petals, because that's how flowers are. They're variegated, isn't that a word? In the petal world, variegated petals. Okay, I like that. That is so pretty. I love it. Okay, I'm going to do that same red, even though, oh, see, I put my hand in it. you got to be careful. I do not want to smear my paint. So this is this is where it's hard. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn my paper around because I don't want to put my hand in the petals. There we go. Much better. I know it looks it's weird when you're doing it upside down, but it's better than getting your hand smearing. So this is where I'm going to kind of fix that blob that kind of ran into my leaf or my petal. <sighs> my leaf. What do you call it? I'm going to do that, and then because this is a bud, I'm going to really make it darker on the bottom. So I'm going to drag this a little bit up. Okay. And then I'm going to just add a little more water. I think I'm going to leave that one. I might actually, no, see, I'm fickle. I need to change my mind. I'm going to add a little more of a purpley, darker red to the bottom here. Well, it wasn't what I wanted. Purple. Maybe it's not working. I was hoping to darken it a little bit. There we go. See, just takes a little messing around. Now, as that dries, you'll see the purple a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna. I got this one and this one to go. So I'm hoping you're all painting along with me and kind of doing what I'm doing. Um. And like I said, you just stop the video whenever I get, I, I'm going too fast. Just stop the video, catch up. It's not a big deal. That's what's so great about videos. When I'm in my classroom, we usually have an hour and a half, hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half in the classroom. And we do this whole lesson in an hour and a half. And I feel like we're rushing. So I kind of like this video idea, I mean, to you, it probably seems like a long time to be doing art for an hour and a half, but that's what's so great. You could like maybe do the drawing lesson one day, and then you could do the painting part another day. So that's what's so fabulous about videos. You're not getting burnt out, and it's just kind of relaxing. One thing I want to say about, as I'm doing this and you're watching, one thing I want to say about art, and this was part of my my senior year project for college, because I was an art major, is how important art is, and I like my picture again, art is in education. Because when you're using your brain in a creative way, and you have to use your imagination, and you have to actually put something that you're thinking about down onto the paper, and you have to figure out how to draw it and how to make it look realistic or fake or <laughs> abstract or whatever you're doing. It, it's helping your brain to um, be creative so that when you're in your math class and you're learning, you know, geometry or, you know, spatial things, you're able to actually see it better because you've had to draw it or paint it or create it, mold it in clay or whatever it is. So art helps in so many ways in other areas of your schooling. And it also helps to relax your brain. It helps you to think creatively. So like even your creative um, writing classes, when you have to use your brain in a creative way, it helps you in so many other areas in school. So I think all classes should have take time out for art. And it also helps you just mentally relax a little bit, right? And not think about math and science and all those other things. Okay, so I think that is finished. Now, I would love to do a blue background. And if I were going to do a blue background, I would wait for this to dry all the way. And then I would be very careful. And I would, add, I would use my fat brush, wet down the paper, 
and being very careful not to touch. I'm going to do one little section just to show you because this is pretty dry over here. I'm going to wet down this section and I'm trying really hard not to touch my leaves. And now I'm going to add my blue. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose this blue. So I'm going to add blue. Got to get it really wet. And I don't want it to be super dark. But I think blue and green are so complementary that it's going to make my tulips pop off the page a lot more so than if I left it white. So now this is where I take my brush and I go as close as I can to that leaf. Okay, as close as I can. But if this is dry, if these leaves are dry, they're not going to bleed as quickly as if they were wet. So you really want to wait for it to be all the way dry. And then it's just a lot easier. Okay, so there you have it. I've got that little section. And then I'll do this little section and this little section. All right, and then I can come up in here. Look at that. Doesn't that look so pretty? I love it. Look at that. So I can do that with all these. I just do a little section at a time and I'll try to be consistent with my blue. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll turn it off and I'll come back. All right. Finished putting a bunch of blue on my background. I went as close as I could to the flower with this flatter brush like this. See this flat brush? So I got up really close to my flower with the blue, as close as I could, right? And then I'm going to take my water brush and I'm just going to kind of blend in the color a little bit because it's kind of it's kind of streaky with that little brush. So I can just add water to my paper and kind of blend in that blue without getting too close to my flowers. That way I get rid of all those streaks but you know, that's just a little extra step. You don't have to do that. I just think it looks better because you really don't want any white to show. I think it's okay to have a little bit of white around the flower. That's not a big deal and around the petals, but you just don't want any white to show in all these bigger places. Now I want to show you, I touched the flower right here and it's all pink and I did it over here and it got a little orange in my sky and I did it a little bit around here, whatever. It, I think it, that's what makes watercolor so pretty. I like it. I don't think it's a big deal. So I love it. I'm going to leave it. I hope you love it too. I would totally uh, tip it up and show you, but I don't want it to run. So you never want to do that, right? Until it's completely dry. All right. My dumb picture cut flag. All right. Well, I hope that you've had fun doing this lesson. I love watercolor. It's one of my favorite mediums to use. And I really want you to remember one thing. Whoever's taking this class right now, you could be a kindergartner, you could be a third grader, you could be a sixth grader, you could be an adult. We all are at a different stage in our learning of art and drawing. And so don't beat yourself up if yours doesn't look like mine. Because guess what? I've been doing this for a lot of years. These are just the basic tools and yours might look a little different than mine, and that's okay, because that's your art, and this is my art, and we're not supposed to have the same art. It's not gonna look exactly the same, and we don't want it to look exactly the same. So whatever yours looks like, I'm sure it's beautiful, and look at how different, look at how different these are to, to side by side, right? This is one of mine, and this is one of my students. She's, she's 13, okay? She's one of my seventh graders that's taking my art class, and some of my younger kids, theirs don't look anything like this at all. It's okay. So just enjoy the process, enjoy learning how to draw, and don't think you have to be a perfect artist. Because whatever you have created, I'm sure is beautiful, and your mother is going to love it. Till next time.